Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me for tea on the real Orient Express. I feel like the luckiest girl in the world this morning. Uh, it's better than the magic of filmmaking, isn't it? Because you didn't actually film on it. Uh, well, do you know, it, it, it reminds us of the magic of filmmaking, but we did recreate all of this. We did find our own linen. We got our own glassware and we found all those original plans from uh, the, the people who designed this uh, amazing thing. And then and then we made it rock from side to side. Yeah, absolutely. And it's all about attention to detail as well. I'm sure that every single prop on this set, from the costumes to the teapots, was quite extraordinary and recreated yeah. from the time, wasn't it? Well, I think even down to, I think I have a, a, a pin, a, a, one of those little brooches yeah. on. And I remember Alex, the designer, she was, they had to have like loads of meetings to come up with things that were allowed to me because you wanted an actual Orient Express pin. Um, yeah, down to that, and I'm not sure anyone will notice. Look out for that. Oh, no, no. Look at the pin. <laughs> the pin is there. <laughs> Agatha Christie was a master of the wee clo, you know, putting all those characters together in a bit of a pressure cooker. Uh, how much does it translate on a film set, putting, you know, that great ensemble together in such small spaces? Well, a bit theatrical, isn't it? It was Well, I, I, yes, uh, you find that a c cinematic equivalent for that that, uh, that means that with this 70 mil experience, you invite people onto the train. Yeah. So you want to enclose them as well. What I found, at least this is what I remember doing, but it's maybe not what happened <laughs> is that because it is an enclosed space it's a beautiful enclosed space but anything can be rather prison like if you're in the middle of a murder investigation of course uh, was to uh, not rehearse much but basically get people on the train at least this is what I remember doing mm -hmm. and try to shoot as soon as we could <laughs> they're all these guys were all what Clint Eastwood would call fast startup actors <laughs> so they, they they responded very very quickly so give them a glass of water a nice cup of tea uh, and off we go so many big stars on this set so you know th does the head spin you know everyone's so famous yeah, I mean, I remember being very nervous on one of the first days when everyone was on was when I have to come and say we've been stuck in the snow, we're stuck yeah. in the snow, and I had to sort of deliver this sort of speech to everyone. <laughs> and it was like doing a speech at the Oscars. I remember going, oh God, this is terrifying. I but was, wonderful. You know. It was great, and Tom had such chutzpah for that. I remember that, but I also remember on a slightly more prosaic level that Tom, you may recall, had to uh, carry a large full uh, bottle of champagne on a moving train and approach Michelle yeah. Pfeiffer and then Julie <laughs> exactly. Dent. And and just going, oh, look please. natural, yeah. look exactly. handsome, look enjoy yourself. And also don't ruin the costumes and don't <laughs> annoy the movie stars, Tom. Get to the end and then sit down. Yeah. Yeah. Does yeah. it feel sometimes like they're kind of judging your edit because you know Johnny Depp or Judy Dench are looking at you and thinking you know he's good he's good um, I don't think there's any danger of people thinking <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> um, no it was the most it's the most sort of supportive uh, Ken put together not only a brilliant talented team mm. but a really kind lovely sort of family team I think so it was uh, I everybody had to that. sort of everybody had to sort of pass the ball, you know, you'd yeah. scenes where when you start with, you know, Derek Jacoby up that end and you go through and you follow Tom and you go past Daisy Ridley and Penelope Cruz yeah. and Small Willem shot Defoe. of Johnny. Small, yeah. and, and Johnny's the guy in the back. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly you suddenly you realise that the guy in the back is Johnny next yeah. to Josh Gad. Yeah. Uh, but everybody knows that they have a line, they have the you know, they have to pass the ball yeah. as it were, they have to sort of keep the team mm. working together and they were very, very uh, generous about that. And somebody like Judy Dench wouldn't let it be any other way. Uh, no, absolutely. Mm. Well, Everyone's talking about your mustache, I'm sure. What I want to know is not only what, you know when you're acting as part of the craft, but when you're directing with that huge thing, uh, you know. It's it's unusual, and yes. you forget that it's on some of the time. Except yeah. the day one when I walked on, and uh, uh, Daisy Ridley was on. We were about to do a scene, and she looked at me for the first time and went, "Christ, yeah. that's bold." <laughs> uh, to which I replied, "Bold, good." Yes. She said, "Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, bold, good." Bold. She did say bold, good. Didn't she? I think she yes. Yeah. Um, so you, you just have to be super careful, particularly in the mornings. It's when you're a little bit the early doors, late in the shoot, mm. uh, and you've decided, you know, I think I'll have that muesli. Oh no, yes, there no. It is. So it's it's. A it's, a, it's, a, it's the enemy of eating. It, it, uh, absolutely. You know, you, you'd be on the liquid diet for Very a Very much. Days. I was a straw man for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> what was fascinating about the whole literature behind Agatha Christie is the international nature of it. And this mm. is a travel film. Uh, where did you get to film or was it more studio based because of the presence of the train? We did get to go to see what we would see to mm. New Zealand and we mm. went to France and we went to Switzerland and we were in Malta. But we were also in Surrey mm. uh, in <laughs> England where we recreated the train. and were, But we did in, in a uh, in timeless fashion we built a massive 15 meter high viaduct on which we struck the whole train and we built a mountain behind it mm. and it created a sort of uh, 360 effect so that when we mm. did when actors did walk through the curtain and there was the train and there was the sky beyond it, there was mm. quite a, a well, large part yeah. of no it was so required. high up you couldn't see any skyline so it was like being in the mountains and 
it was cold because we were filming in sort of you know over winter and the fake snow and that does something to your imagination as well so actually yeah. you walked on and go oh we are yeah, yeah. by the time you're know. in Switzerland exactly, <laughs> exactly in Switzerland by the time the breath is on the mouth you can yeah. see yeah. how cold it is you think you are you're quite yeah. sort of di <laughs> um, uh, um, yeah distracted but you don't have the the logistical challenges of um, you know, being in the middle of Istanbul. So, I stop the train, come back. We just want to adjust Penelope's makeup and uh, Johnny's hair was a, so we'll do it again. That's when the train people go, the train's leaving. And, you know, so we, we built it and had that control over it. So, you actually were never in Swiss because our Swiss viewers will want to know if that scene of the train in Switzerland was actually uh, there. The, the uh, spectacular aerial shots are from Switzerland and near and, and the Swiss side of uh, Mont Blanc. And we, we found a, the, the uh, our engine and tender were from Switzerland, and we that's what we recreated. And it, the massive mountain uh, uh, engines were what we were trying to find, because obviously, uh, you know, you need to, a lot of power to pull this thing across the Bremer Pass. And so uh, Switzerland was a, was a guiding, inspirational force, I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to give too much away, don't. but uh, uh, Hercule Poirot is on his way to the Nile. Uh, may we hope uh, for our Arabic viewers that you would be filming something there? Well, uh, we w the, it, it depends. It on basically whether enough people go and see this movie I think we have we'd be thrilled we'd be thrilled to do some more of these and uh, and um, uh, so uh, yeah we're, 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 we're excited at the, the possibility and uh, we shall see you decide